It was a moment of inattention that led to a small fire on Carolyn's boat. What should they have done to avoid it? And what actually did they do right to keep it from becoming a fatal disaster? I'm Nika Waters, recording a Boat Galley podcast for Carolyn Sherlock. And on this episode, I'm sharing one bad day on her boat in the hopes that you can avoid something similar on yours. But first, a little word about today's sponsor. Are you looking for a one-stop shop for all of your Pacific Northwest cruising needs? Northwest Explorations offers bareboat charters, guided flotillas, powerboat training, service, detailing, and brokerage. They're located on the Washington coast and Vancouver Island, and you're covered no matter what side of the border you're on. Visit nwexplorations.com to learn more. On one really bad day, because of one careless moment and one bit of just not thinking, Carolyn and Dave almost lost their boat. Before any more of this is shared, just know that they were physically okay, a little bit mentally shaken, and that barefoot gal, the boat, came away with only minor damage. To make a long story somewhat a little bit shorter, this is what happened. As part of preparing to go to the Bahamas, Dave changed the Raycor fuel filters, then ran the engine to make sure all the air was out of the fuel lines. Just as he was ready to shut the engine down, it died, and it wouldn't restart. Testing showed that the fuel pump had died. Well, they do carry a spare, so Dave dug it out and began to install it. It is as many boat places are, it's in a little bit of an awkward spot. And in the process of installing the pump, he apparently moved it just wrong, touching a positive and negative wire at the same time, so that it caused a short in the engine wiring, which led to a fire. Did you see where they went wrong? Well, one big thing is they didn't shut off power to the engine before working on it. When working on anything electrical, or actually in the vicinity of something electrical, the rule is to always shut off the power so you can't accidentally put a wrench or a screwdriver in such a way as to create a short. Dave was so intent on the fuel pump problem that he forgot, and Carolyn was sitting right there working on something else, and it didn't occur to her that he hadn't. Dave says that it was his fault, and Carolyn says she's equally responsible since she was right there. What they did wrong is pretty obvious. But they did do a few things right. One, Dave yelled fire absolutely immediately. Carolyn grabbed for the nearest fire extinguisher, which was just one step away, and handed it to him. Carolyn knew how to release it from its bracket, and Dave knew how to use it, and just for the record, Carolyn knows how to use it too. Carolyn grabbed the two fire blankets and remaining fire extinguishers and put them next to Dave and then turned off the batteries. The fire appeared to be out just after the first fire extinguisher, but Dave threw one of the fire blankets over the area just to be sure. Neither one of them panicked. They knew what to do immediately, and they did it. There must have been quite a bit of practicing involved, and it makes me... Nika, remember that I need to practice pulling out that fire extinguisher and practice firing it. As they looked at the damage later, after they'd had a little bit of time to breathe and stop worrying so much, they were surprised to see how extensive the damage was. Wires that were 18 inches away from where the flames had been were damaged. There were numerous different sections of wire that were burned through or had insulation melted off. If you want to go to the blog post that's associated with this podcast, there's a link in the show notes, but there are some pictures there. When they removed one side panel from the engine compartment, they discovered that the insulation on it had burned almost all the way through, which is even more chilling because What's on the other side of that panel 
is the propane locker. Had the fiberglass underneath the insulation panel ignited, the propane tanks almost certainly would have exploded. And the jerry cans of gasoline that were eight feet away would have gone next, and then the diesel fuel in the main tanks and the jerry cans. Not only would Barefoot Gal not have survived, Carolyn seriously doubts that they would have. They also learned what a mess a fire extinguisher makes. The chemicals go everywhere, in every nook and cranny, which is exactly what you need when you have a fire. So thank goodness for the mess, but yuck, what a cleanup job. The bottom line is that they're still a little shaken. Carolyn and Dave feel like they're pretty safe cruisers. And then something like this happens and you see how quickly a situation can go from a minor problem, like a dead fuel pump, to disaster, a boat fire with nearly an explosion. Sure, there's an obvious takeaway, which is to always cut power to what you're working on and near. The bigger lesson is to slow down. Simply take a minute when you're starting a project and think about the safety aspects. Think through if there are precautions that you should have taken and if you've taken those, even if they're inconvenient. And if the nature of a project changes, even in the middle of it, like changes from changing the raycor to changing the fuel pump, stop and pause and think again about the safety issues. On an even higher level, Think about a fire on board your boat. Have you thought about what you'd do? Does everybody know where the fire extinguishers are? How to pull them off of the wall and how to operate them? Do you have any fire blankets? Smoke detectors? Have you ever done a fire drill? These are the kinds of questions that we can talk about when we share an anchorage somewhere in this year. I'm looking forward to that and I hope you are too. Thank you so much for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. Share the love if you found it helpful. Tell your friends about us or leave a five-star review in your favorite podcast app.